Welcome everyone to the Canadian PA student live Q&A here in our Canadian Pre-PA Student Network Facebook group. I did my, I'm from Ontario originally by Niagara Falls, and I did my undergraduate degree in forensic biology at the University of Toronto. Um, I graduated in 2014, and I actually uh, didn't really know what I wanted to do right after university. I wasn't sure that I wanted to stick with forensics. I was a little bit interested in medicine, a little bit interested in law. Um, so I took a bunch of time off and worked in different fields. Um, I worked as a pharmacy assistant. I was an advanced medical first responder on a volunteer basis. Um, I did an internship with NATO, so quite a variety. And then I took a few years off um, to travel uh, while working at a multicultural center, um, both in between trips and remotely. So I've done that and continue to do that. Um, and I decided to apply to PA school I guess kind of after a little bit after learning about what the profession was from a friend that was a PA. Um, I had never really wanted to be a doctor, but I was super interested in medicine and PA just fit everything that I loved about medicine, especially being on the front lines with patients. Uh, so I applied and I was a first time applicant and then I got into this cycle. So that's that's how I got here. Rachel, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey? Yeah, definitely. So uh, again, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Rachel. I grew up in uh, southern Manitoba. Um, I grew up about two hours south of Winnipeg uh, in a little small city. Um, after high school, I graduated and I went to Minnesota um, for my first undergrad. Um, I was pre-medicine at that point, uh, but mainly because I felt like I had to be pre-medicine. Uh, so for the first three years of that undergrad, I was pre-med, um, but then ended up switching during that last year. Um, to do psych and neuroscience. And so I graduated with degrees in those. Um, and then I moved back to Manitoba uh, to pursue clinical psychology. Um, I went to the University of Manitoba and I got my honors degree uh, accelerated to help me apply uh, for master's programs in clinical psych. And it was during my final year, my final semester of that program that I learned about the PA profession and I made the switch. Um, so I wasn't pre-PA for very long. While applying, um, I worked as a crisis counselor on a volunteer basis. I've also worked in different social service fields. So I didn't have a lot of medical background coming into the program at all. So that's a little bit about me. So part one will focus on questions from the pre-PA journey with Kelsey and Rachel. So our first question, what is the difference between PA and MD? And why did you choose PA? Okay, so for that one, I will say that, I mean, I'm only approaching it from a PA perspective, and I don't have a ton of knowledge on like the full scope of what it is to be an MD. But with that being said, I think of um, an MD as being, you know, you have your four years of med school, and then your residency, and then you become very specialized. Um, and you work in one field, or, you know, if you specialize in more than one, but you kind of have one area of focus. And then you practice in that field, you kind of move to the top of that field, and then you practice autonomously. Whereas as a physician assistant, um, we graduate as generalists, and then we don't have a residency, at least here in Canada. And then we're able to practice in any field, and we practice under the supervision of a um, physician and in collaboration with those physicians. And we're able to switch specialties throughout our career. So I would say that the biggest difference is that we work with a physician as opposed to autonomously, and we are able to switch fields throughout our career as opposed to specializing. Those were the two biggest differences for me. And for why I chose PA, um, I, like I said, I had never really wanted to go into medicine. I liked everything that I liked about medicine to me was sort of what a resident does. So very frontline with patients, a lot of learning, a lot of working within a team environment. So really relying on the other people that are in that environment. And for me, that just fit better with a career as a PA than it did as a career as a doc. I liked being able to move around. I liked the work-life balance, but really it's that like, front line with patients throughout the entire career that was kind of what sold it for me. And Rachel, uh, can you tell us uh, why you chose? Yeah, so I mean, I was considering medicine again, the first few years, my first undergrad, but realized just the, the MD route wasn't what I ended up wanting. So I had kind of figured that was the only option if I wanted to pursue a career in medicine until learning about the PA profession. And what really appealed to me about it and why I switched from the clinical psych route was it's a perfect combination of, you know, being able to practice medicine, a shorter amount of time for school, 
the flexibility is incredible that you can work in so many different specialties and switch without, you know, extra with on the job training. And then also just the aspect of being a generalist really appealed to me as well. So those are a few of the main pieces for me. How did you choose your undergrad degree? And any advice if someone's in grade 11 or 12, how they should approach this important decision? I started off as a biology major during my first undergrad, and I I actually wish I would have gone in undecided and made the decision a little bit later. I think there's a lot of pressure to, to feel like you need to go in with your your undergrad degree uh, in or which major you want in mind. But I think it's okay if you go in without knowing and there is some time to decide as you take, you know, your first year of courses and start to explore different things. In terms of, you know, if you're wondering what is what would be the best for PA school for the U of M program, it can be Bachelor of Arts, it can be Bachelor of Science, it just needs to be a four year undergrad degree. So when I was choosing mine, I, I really chose it based on what I found to be interesting, but also something that would really keep my options open after graduating. Yeah, I would say probably the exact same thing as Rachel, like when I finished high school, I, it was the same thing where I was like, do I like science? Do I like the legal aspect of things? So I went into forensic biology, but looking back now, I mean, your undergraduate degree, unless you're going into something really specific, like maybe business or nursing, your undergraduate degree doesn't matter that much. It's more of a kind of a stepping stone to, shouldn't say it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter exactly what you pick that much because it's sort of a stepping stone into whatever you do next barring those few sort of professions. Going back, I would say pick something that you're interested in, something that you know you can do well in, and something that, like Rachel said, keeps your options open so that you are able to get those prereqs once you have a better idea of exactly where you want to go. But don't stress over knowing in grade 11 or 12 like exactly what you want to do because I've been out of high school for 14 years or something and just picked. So <laughs> yeah, that would be my advice. And does it matter where you do your undergrad degree when it comes to applying to PA programs? Do they distinguish or prefer certain undergrads compared to others? My undergrad at U of M was only three years. So my American undergraduate degree was one that applied to my uh, PA school application. And when you are applying to the U of M PA program, uh, there is a option where you can put in which undergrads or which school you got it in and which country, and they will verify it for you. So if you're curious, uh, there's a way to figure it out on the website. And from what I understand, it, it doesn't matter as long as you uh, meet the qualifications, uh, whether you do it in something science related or non-science related, you still qualify to apply. So that wouldn't exclude you uh, because you did something a little bit non-traditional from what I understand. You are done your undergrad, you're now in PA school. If you were to look back, what advice would you give your younger self, specifically your first year university self? I think I would tell myself to really just relax more. And by, by that, I don't mean like do less, but just I felt so much pressure in those first, in that first year. And so I, I was so worried about, you know, every single grade that I got, every single, you know, like making sure I had X number of extracurriculars. And just now I can look back and realize that a lot of those things don't, they matter absolutely, but the amount of pressure I was putting on myself wasn't necessary. And so if you're trying your best, if you are making connections, if you are, you know, going after opportunities that come up to you, that's all you need to be doing. And that's what you should be doing. But the extra added pressure just isn't necessary. So try to enjoy it because it just, yeah, it's way more, more fun that way. Yeah, I was going to say the exact same thing, like relax. But I would also say that like kind of kind of going off of that, like it is okay to change your mind. And if I had known that in first year, I would have felt a lot better. And the other thing I would say is like, take advantage of the resources that your university offers you to help you learn the best way to study. Because going from high school to undergrad can be a vast change, especially if you were somebody in, who high, in high school who was like, didn't have to study that much. Like you are going to have to study a lot in university and it's in a different way. So if your school offers ways to help you figure out the best way to study, take advantage of that because no matter what graduate program you go into, your GPA does matter. So I would say, yeah, just use the resources that are available to you to help you do really well. When and how did you decide to become a physician? Um, for me, it was actually when I had come back from traveling for a couple of years came back and I just felt really sure about the things that I wanted. Like I wanted a day that was diverse in the sense that I could see different people throughout the day. I wanted to work in a team environment. I wanted to do something that really helped people and that I didn't have to kind of question, like, am I contributing in a way that's meaningful for me? 
So actually having taken time off and worked in different fields was the biggest thing that made me realize everything I don't want and everything I do want. And I decided to apply to PA like no more than maybe six months before the application started because I had kind of figured out what I wanted, looked into the application process and was like, oh my goodness, this is for me. So that was my process. I was in my finals, yeah, my final semester of my uh, second undergrad working on applications for clinical psychology programs. I was in a class, I remember the moment so clearly, I was in this class in my honor seminar that was supposed to be about what we can do with our psych honors degrees. And I tuned it out because I was like, I know I'm doing clinical psych. So I I was tuned out, uh, but on this list of slides was the physician assistant profession. And I, my ears perked up. I literally Googled it right there went to your website and, uh, and I read that was the first time I was really exposed to it. And like that moment I was like, this is like, this is it. And so from there I was doing my research. I did some shadowing and just like was reaffirmed over and over that, wow. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. So, um, it was kind of that really specific moment for me. How would you describe your class? We are all very much not the same in a very good way. Uh, we are a very diverse class. We all have very different backgrounds. Some have science backgrounds, uh, some have more non-science backgrounds, some have families, some don't, uh, some have worked for years, some are right out of their undergrad. So very, very diverse. And it's really, really fantastic because we each bring something different to the team and we really do work together as a team. So yeah, it's really, really great that we're definitely not all the same. (laughs) What are some examples of non-science backgrounds? that your classmates have come from, if you can remember off the top of your head. For the most part, people do have science, but we have a lot of different sciences. Um, And then we do have uh, one of our classmates was a psychologist before starting and was in more of like a school psychology route. So for her, she's mentioned a couple of times that her only real science background was the three prereqs that she had to take for this course. And then it's just like a, a big sort of diversity in types of science backgrounds other than that. I, I think, I'm not sure if we have anybody that's something like totally different in our class, but I know there has been in previous classes. Okay, so now we're going into part two, which is questions about Manitoba PA program. Why did you choose the U of M Manitoba PA program? So I applied to all three programs and U of M was definitely kind of at the top of my list for a few reasons. So it was a move out of province for me, which was the one thing that was like kind of challenging. But I really liked that U of M does their didactic year. Like we're together all day, even virtually this year. And it was important to me to kind of have that sense of community with my classmates. Uh, And then the other big draw for me was the length of some of our clinical experiences next year. So I think we get a little bit longer in like eMERGE and SURGE and internal medicine and family medicine. And those were all areas of interest for me. And then I believe we also get a community medicine. So all areas that I was really interested in, and it was a big pull for me to get that extra time in fields that I might want to work in. So that was what it was for me. Yeah, so this is actually the only program that I did apply to. So one piece was, I mean, I'm from Manitoba. It was really uh, enticing to stay close to home. But another big piece was the master's program aspect of it. Just having had two undergrads, I was looking to get a master's program uh, degree. So that was one piece. And then also there's a research project that is part of the program that also really enticed me. I have a bit of a research background. And so I appreciated that aspect. And then just after reading the mission statement on the MPAS website really resonated with me. And I really connected with a lot of what the program's goals were. So that also really helped for my decision to apply here. What makes Manitoba's PA program different from the other schools? The Manitoba program is a master's program. And then the two Ontario programs are professional undergrad uh, degrees. And the main difference with that is that we have the capstone project. So there is a research element, like Rachel said. And then being in person or in person virtually this year, but all day is, I think, different for our program. I don't know too much about the other ones, but I know that that was a big draw for me. So that does make it a little bit different as well. And then, like I said, the length of exposures or the length of clinical experiences in second term are a little bit different. And then one thing that we get to learn a lot about in our program, and I'm not sure about the others, but that I really appreciate about ours is there's a big focus on Indigenous health. What's, what is the difference between a bachelor's degree from Ontario? and a master's degree that you get in Manitoba for PA? In terms of like getting a job afterwards, I I don't think there really 
as far as I'm aware, there isn't really a big difference between whether you have a bachelor's or a master's. I think the big difference between the two is what Kelsey already mentioned, you know, the, the research aspect, the research project for Manitoba. But otherwise, you know, I, I really don't think there's that much of a difference. <laughs> Like in terms of getting a job, it's, it's going to be the same. It's just having, I guess, a research project, a potential to publish under your belt that comes along with the master's, but that would be it. So from what I'm hearing, it sounds like from an employment perspective, regardless of whether you get a bachelor's degree or a master's degree for PA, you can still apply to the same jobs. But the difference is for Manitoba, you are formally involved in research through the Capstone Project. And also because it's a master's, the requirements to get in are a little bit different. So you need the four years of undergrad before applying. Is it possible to work during PA school? It is possible as long as you know that some of your free time is going to be work time and not like just free time. So I work remotely, which gives me a lot. And that was before the pandemic. Um, So that gives me a lot of freedom with my schedule. But I do, in general, work through my lunch break every day. And then usually a little bit on the weekends as well. And then some of our classmates that were nurses before or are still nurses do work shifts as well. So I would say you absolutely can work while you're in PA school, but kind of know your limits and don't push yourself if it's too much. And it does need to be I would think something that does offer a certain level of flexibility because our schedules are intense at the best of times they're intense so possible but but definitely takes finessing of the schedule. What is first year PA school like at Manitoba's uh, master's program? It has been probably the most intense thing I've done, but it has also been one of the most enjoyable and rewarding things so far. The workload is very heavy. Um, I know starting off uh, the first semester, I was like, okay, I got this. I can do this. This is okay. It's a lot, but I can manage it. But then second term hits and it's just like, it's heavy. Uh, It's a lot, Uh, but but it's doable. And I think that's like, that needs to be said always at the end of those sentences, it's still doable. So are you studying a lot and exhausted like the majority of the time? Yes, but it's it's doable. And it's something that there's so many supports within the program, including your classmates, the faculty are fantastic and always make themselves available. It's intense and it's a lot, but it's also a lot of fun. Like I've had incredibly enjoyable experiences in PA school so far. Yes, it's intense. It's absolutely doable. It's nice that in first term, you kind of learn how you're going to study and how you're going to take breaks before second term kicks off. Um, And then from what we've heard, like third term is not quite as intense as second term. So if you can just get through second term, you'll be all right, but it's flying by. So, you know, all things considered, it's flying by. And what happens in second year of PA school? Second year for us is all clinical with the exception of, I think, once a month academic days where we come in and continue to learn new skills. So we rotate in several different uh, places. So I know there's eMERGE, surgery, internal med, community med, family med, psychiatric med, pediatrics, I think OBGYN. I'm sure I'm missing a few, but we get to rotate all over and we're able to be here in Winnipeg or go up north or to other places as well. So for me, that's what I'm excited about is just being on clinic every day. As of right now, we're shadowing for one half day every week. And that's like my favorite part of the week. So I'm just so excited to actually be there in clinic. Any scholarships or funding that is available for students that attend Manitoba's PA programs? There are. I found this uh, part to be a little bit challenging is you have to, I mean, there's a lot of bursaries and things available. The uh, Faculty of Graduate Studies at the University of Manitoba sends out a lot of emails and information regarding that. So it takes a little bit of time to kind of sift through all of the uh, bursaries and, and funding opportunities that are available to see if you're eligible. But there definitely are ones. I've applied to t- three and I've gotten three uh, scholarships this year. So there's definitely funding opportunities available if you take the time to, to find them and to apply. How do you pick a topic for your capstone project? Would you be able to give us some details about how that works? Your capstone project is like completely open. You can decide to research whatever you want, being mindful of the fact that this isn't a master's, a research master's, and it's not a thesis project. So you need to be very mindful of how much time you're actually going to be able to give to it, especially if you're doing something that involves like research, uh, ethics approval, or like chart reviews, anything. So a lot of students pick things that are relevant to the actual practice of PAs and try and build on that body of research. But you can also pick like anything that's of interest to you. So for me, like I've decided to research into LGBTQIA issues in healthcare. 
Um, so yeah, it's completely open, but you just need to be mindful of like getting research approval and your time in second year and first year. How would you say you balance school in personal life? Like what does a typical day or schedule look like for you? This is a great question. And it's something I'm still even this far in figuring out completely. I, I balance it by first communicating with those around me, just making sure that they know the stress that I'm under and what's expected of me in PA school so that they're understanding. So it's a lot of communication with that. Uh, but then I do also block off an hour every day of no school time, guilt-free, like don't look at a book, don't look at anything PA related for an hour, whether it's broken up or together. So that's really helpful just to keep my productivity going, I find, to have that little reset, but also just prioritizing like Things like getting in exercise, getting in fresh air, leaving the house now that we're inside all the time. So leaving the house, whether it's just to go for a walk or something, but it's just the little things like that, making sure that you're prioritizing them has been huge, um, especially in this second term with it being so busy. What do you believe makes a strong candidate for Manitoba's PA program? One thing that makes a strong candidate is really being aware of the world around you and aware of the different, I'll use the term social determinants of health and how those things in different aspects in life influence one's experience in healthcare. So really being able to understand that everyone in healthcare may have a different experience and being aware of that. Wanting to advocate for patients, I think is a huge thing that makes uh, you a strong candidate. Being able to communicate effectively effectively is huge. Being able to listen really well is huge. Being able to work well on a team, being able to collaborate. I mean, now I can go on forever, but I think those would be huge. Uh, the listening piece, the communication piece, those are huge. It's like, it's so important, I think, in our program to really discuss what it is that you plan to do for your patients as a PA, as opposed to what the PA profession is going to do for you. I think that advocacy for patients, and like Rachel said, being aware of the social determinants of health is such an important part of healthcare in general, and Manitoba's program really cares about that. So I think being really aware, like Rachel said, of what's going on uh, is super important to be a strong candidate here. And then, yeah, just being able to work in a team for sure, because uh, we are together all day, every day. So it's important as well. So it sounds like a lot of the attributes that you discuss are um, having to do specifically with uh, CAMNED's PA, so communication, collaboration, leadership, being able to hone in on those skills and demonstrating that on admissions, uh, but also being familiar with the issues um, and healthcare, um, I guess the healthcare that's going on in Manitoba as well, uh, since you are applying to a Manitoba program. So now we're going to start on part three, which is questions relating to applying to Manitoba's PA program. Our first question is, what are the prerequisites to get into Manitoba's PA program? So I, I was just looking at the website actually today um, to look at what the requirements were. And uh, I did notice there, uh, just the, the wording on the website had changed a little bit in terms of what's expected in the uh, personal statement. The questions that they wanted you to respond to were different than the ones from my year. So definitely take a look at the website the year that you're wanting to apply. So you do have to have the four-year bachelor's degree. Um, so everybody applying into the Manitoba program has already already completed their undergraduate degree. And I know there's a lot of questions about does a three year degree count? I've seen those pop up. But as you can see on the website, it, you do require the four year degree minimum GPA of 3.0 in the most recent 60 credit hours. So I think that that equates to about the last two years of schooling. Uh, and I will just say that I took a bunch of courses afterwards, and it is your most recent hours that count. So having taken recent courses knocked out some of my last two years of courses, it is those most recent 60 credit hours. And then one semester course each of anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry. You can take those at any university. It doesn't have to be the university that you did your undergraduate degree in. I took them at a different university. But yeah, like Rachel said, and like Anne said, always check the website. And if you're unsure, you can email the program. They will get back to you um, because that's your best source of information. So does Manitoba's PA program look at the cumulative GPA or the last 60 credit hours? Um, as per the website, uh, it is the last 60 credit hours. Who did you use for your letter of reference and any tips? So it is three letters of reference, or at least it was when we applied. So I used my current employer, which I think might be a requirement, or at least it was that you used your current uh, employer. And I used a coworker that I had worked with on a large project um, over the course of many, many months. So we had worked closely together. 
And then I actually seeked out somebody that used to be my supervisor when I was a medical first responder to provide the last one. So my strategy with that, and this is just my strategy, but I wanted somebody who had seen me in a medical role and seen me interact with patients and also had seen me train for a medical role. And then I wanted the person that I had worked with on the large project because I knew that she could speak honestly to how I work as a member of a team, especially because like working on a large project, we had had disagreements on what to do and we had worked through them. So I felt that she really reflected how I would be as a PA in a real world environment. So that's how I chose. And then uh, my boss was the same thing. Like that was a requirement. Um, and I knew that she had seen me work on several projects. So that's how I chose her as well. So I would just say, yeah, pick someone that can honestly speak to your work ethic and someone that you don't necessarily know. They're just going to list off a bunch of, you know, sort of qualities that they think they want to hear, like someone that can actually speak to who you are as a person. This actually brings up, that was another difference. I noticed on the website, it's only two recommend recommendation letters. Uh, but when I applied, yeah, it was also three. So I approached this by, uh, I did my academic advisor, but also someone I did research with for three years during my first undergrad. And so I, she was also my professor for a number of classes. So I'd gotten to know her really well. She had gotten to know me really well in terms of my work ethic, just my personality. So I really appreciated that, that she could give that perspective. But then I also used my counseling supervisor. So the person that was the supervisor of on my shifts when I was doing counseling, she had seen me do a lot of counseling sessions. And so she could really speak to my ability to communicate. And she also worked in the medical field herself. So she also had that kind of background. And so she could help, you know, speak to that as well. And then I also used my supervisor for a nonprofit that I had worked for or volunteered for, for the past three years. So I had known him really well as well. So um, it really stresses the importance of building good and strong relationships with advisors, supervisors, throughout your undergrad, because that really does pay off when it comes to asking for letters of recommendation. So what I'm hearing is that um, you didn't have three references from the same category of experience. So there was one for academic, potentially, one that verified an extracurricular uh, or a job, and one that had a verified patient care experience or where you had worked with patients or clients one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, that could speak about that. And they all knew you fairly well. And it wasn't just a verification of your activities. So that's, so does Manitoba's PA program accept out of province applicants? So if you're from BC, Alberta, Ontario, Nova Scotia, et cetera, can you apply to Manitoba's PA program? And do they accept out of province candidates? Yes, they sure do. Um, they accepted me, so they do. And uh, I'm actually one of two out of province applicants that made it into this admission cycle. So another one of the Students in our class is also from out of province. Uh, so yeah, they absolutely do. There are fewer spots that go to the out of province students, um, but I think most years there's a couple of spots. So definitely don't be discouraged if you're out of province, just be a strong applicant um, because yeah, they, they do let you in. <laughs> so one, uh, one person had asked that they, had, they do struggle with nervousness and stress during interviews. Uh, any tips on how to tackle that? Um, I would say just practice. I was very, very nervous as well. Um, but I have have done a lot of interviews uh, in my life, I've had a lot of different jobs. And so what I found is just the more that I do interviews, the easier that it gets with every single one. And so I'm not saying go and do a bunch of interviews, but, but practice. Um, find a group to practice with, practice in front of the mirror, um, as cliche as it is, just practice, practice, practice. And it, it really does help you get more comfortable. I mean, I think it's important just to remember that everyone is so nervous and the panel knows that you're nervous. So if you stumble over some words or you have to take a minute to think like that's okay. Um, and then, yeah, like Rachel said, just practice as much as you can practice recording yourself, practice in a mirror. Um, yeah, practice and just know that it's okay if you stumble a little bit, everyone's nervous. So now we're going on to part four, which is other submitted questions. So these will be questions that didn't fit into any of the categories and the questions that were also submitted on the live as well. Have either of you actually shadowed a physician assistant and what was your experience like? Yes, I shadowed two PAs before I, uh, or while I was applying. I shadowed one in um, on the addictions unit at the Health Sciences Center in Winnipeg and then one uh, in urology. Um, the uh, University of Manitoba, or actually I guess it's the WRHA, has a really neat PA shadowing program. Um, so if you Google um, University of Manitoba PA shadowing program, uh, it'll definitely pop up. Um, and so you have to apply to this program. It's a short application. Um, it's not too intensive. 
uh, but then you can get matched up. And um, I don't know if you're supposed to do it more than once, but I asked if I could shadow more than one uh, and they let me. So um, it was phenomenal. Um, definitely helped with my application and definitely, again, yeah, affirmed that PA was what I wanted to do. So if you have the opportunity, absolutely, I would recommend it. I did, yeah. So I shadowed a PA working in outpatient cardiology. Um, and same thing, it was fantastic. It, you know, I was pretty sure I wanted to do PA before I shadowed and it was amazing. Within one day, I was like, oh my goodness, yes, I want to be a PA. Um, you learn a lot, like it's not a, an official requirement by any means, but you certainly learn a lot and you are able to see how a PA functions within the team and how they function as a provider. And for me, it was also really eye-opening to see what a difference a extra few minutes with a provider makes for a patient that's unsure or is feeling worried. Um, and so for me, that was like the, what made it for, for me to want to apply. So if you're able to shadow, I would absolutely recommend it. If I don't meet GPA requirements, what is the best option? Do I just retake courses? Because I was a lower GPA applicant, um, I kind of just made the cutoff uh, using all four of my years and then for my last 60 credit hours was a bit up above the credit, the cutoff, but yeah, I was definitely a lower GPA applicant. Um, I would say, yes, like you can retake courses for sure, but just be mindful of how much every course is going to improve your GPA and how many courses you'll need to take to get your GPA above the point where it, where you are able to apply. Um, and I don't mean that to be discouraging at all, but just be aware of how many courses you're going to have to take so that you don't venture down a road and then realize, oh my goodness, I need to take a full two years of university. Like just kind of plan that in advance um, and then take courses that you know will boost your GPA uh, that are interesting to you. Um, but yeah, yeah, if it's an option to you to retake the courses, then I did and they counted towards my, my GPA. So retake them or take new courses like Depends what your university does as well, like if it bumps out the old mark or if it just adds a new mark on. So just do your research and uh, and plan in advance for sure. I think that's one of the things that I do appreciate about Manitoba's PA program. If you had a horrible first year, it's not taken into account because um, they only look at the 60 credit hours. Uh, so ideally, if you are going to take courses, make sure you get a good GPA and you do have to weigh the pros and cons of the cost and time that goes in taking more coursework and applying. Uh, so question, does my background as a psychologist turn PA programs off as a potential candidate? No, definitely. I would say definitely not. Um, like we, Kelsey mentioned, we have a previous psychologist in our class. Um, I have a psychology background. Um, if anything, I would say having that knowledge and that experience um, working with people will only help your application. And so definitely I, I would say no. I, I don't think so <laughs> at all. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the first one comes um, from Rachel. Do you have any specific tips for preparing for the MMI? Well, I, I read Doing Right, um, which was helpful just for formatting my answers. But I would say like the most helpful thing that I did preparing for my interview, whether it's panel or MMI, was I looked at what competencies they're looking for in a PA and what the values and mission statement were of the university. And then I looked at my own experiences and I literally wrote out stories that I felt reflected those experiences. And then that way, just so that they were fresh in my mind. And then if I got asked a question and I, I could easily pull and be like, oh, I've actually had an experience similar to this. Um, and it just helped a lot to be able to relate things to my own experiences without having to like dig into the depths of my memory, like going in really prepared allowed me to answer the questions without being rehearsed and to kind of like not feel as nervous as well. So that was my approach. And uh, in addition to doing right, do you have any other books or other resources that you use to prepare for interviews? Google is really helpful. Um, like Googling questions, BMO I know has some um, very helpful questions, uh, question lists. Um, I watched a lot of YouTube videos of interviews that I found to be very helpful. I think some of them were BMO as well. Um, but honestly, like, yeah, Googling and YouTube, um, there's a lot of free resources that, that can be very helpful. I know it's easy to kind of go down a rabbit hole of all of the different resources, um, and sometimes they can get kind of pricey. Um, but I found a lot of success with the free, easily accessible resources from Google and YouTube. Uh, I also used BMO as well. They have like big lists of questions, so that was really helpful. 
Um, being aware of just what's happening, like in sort of the social political sphere um, is probably good to know, especially right now with vaccines and like, there's lots of lots of room to, to be invested in what's happening out in the world and for that potentially to, to at least practice questions on that. And then I think really what Rachel was saying earlier about like journaling, like in terms of why you should get into this program, you're kind of your best resource. So really spending time kind of like looking inward as opposed to just looking for resources online, yeah. Excellent, so it sounds like self-reflection and practice should really be the majority of your preparation rather than reading about the MMI. Um, I did a lot of that as well. Um, I actually did a lot of the writing. I did a lot of like journaling kind of just to, um, a lot of like self-reflection. Um, again, it, that just really helped me with having answers fresh in my mind. And you know, the questions like, tell us about you. Um, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Things like that. Having um, those answers ready to go. Um, but then also just, yeah, looking, like Kelsey said, looking at the experiences that you've had already and try to tie them into why it would make you a really great PA. Um, you can tie almost any, you, uh, you can connect a lot of experiences to why it would make you a great PA. So spend time really making those parallels. Um, and then that really helps too. And was there any sort of preparation for the panel interview? The questions that I focused on the most for the panel interview were questions um, that I found on Google, things like tell the questions that a lot of websites had stressed, like the, the interpersonal questions. Um, so those ones I found to be really challenging. And so those were the, those were the ones that I did practice the most for the panel. So I would recommend Googling traditional PA school interview questions, and those will probably be close to what panel interview questions would look like. I have not interviewed at uh, Manitoba, so I can't speak to that. But when you think about a traditional panel interview, those are usually the types of questions that are involved. Uh, so our next question um, is a little fun. So what specialties are you interested in working in or are most excited to experience in clinical year? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to answer because I have all these ideas about what I love right now, but I know how easily that could change. Uh, but personally, I'm very interested in procedure heavy specialties. So I'm really looking forward to my surgical rotations. Uh, and I'm very excited for uh, the eMERGE and the urgent care uh, experiences as well. I just like the sort of diversity of cases that you would see and getting to see a lot of patients, like mainly having just like a ton of patient interaction. And then, yeah, just the procedure element and the potential uh, surgical elements. So that's kind of where my interests lie right now. Uh, for me, um, we were speaking about this earlier, I was not expecting to enjoy peds, but when I had my uh, shadowing experience or my early exposure experience in peds, I absolutely loved it. Um, so I'm now considering perhaps peds, but I'm also a very, uh, very open mind. Um, community medicine and community health are also very important to me. And so um, I definitely could see myself working in that primary care setting. But again, I um, have no idea. There's every, every rotation or every shadowing experience is just so wonderful. So we'll see. <laughs> um, for those that don't know, what's the difference between a panel interview and an MMI interview? So based on my understanding, a panel uh, interview is um, yourself and then there is a number of panelers that will ask you questions. Um, it can range from you know five to three to however many. Um, and so the questions can be very varied. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, they can pretty much ask you anything. Uh, and then an MMI um, are very scenario-based questions that can be um, based on you know, medical ethics and things like that. So that would be more so where you're uh, given a scenario, you read the scenario, and then you have a certain time limit to respond or uh, to, to that given scenario. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell, the difference between them. Um, Kelsey, I don't know if you have anything to add. No, not really. Uh, the only thing I would stress is that you don't need to have like medical knowledge to answer the MMI questions. They are based on things that like the average person would be able to answer you. You're not going to be asked actual medical questions. So don't waste your time like trying to learn medicine before the MMI. Uh, would you would undergrad research be considered beneficial for the application process? For me, um, my undergrad research was extremely helpful, but um, not necessarily from what I was researching. Um, but it was more so just the, the, all the aspects involved in research. So the discipline, the um, work ethic, the uh, collaboration, the relationship I had with my advisors, so like those aspects of it were really, really helpful. Um, but it wasn't again, like the project that I was working on that really mattered. It was 
all of the aspects surrounding research. So um, it's a great opportunity if you can, uh, but definitely, uh, yeah, not required. And another related question, are extracurriculars important in terms of obtaining an interview for a PA school? I would say anything that is going to make you a more well-rounded um, provider, like I don't even want to say a more well-rounded applicant, but anything that's going to really round out who you are as a physician assistant is going to help your chances of getting into a PA program. So just kind of by default, the more that you do, the more extra curriculars you're involved in, the more people that you experience interactions with are going to help round you out as an applicant um, and also help to inform, you know, your letter of intent and what you're able to talk about. Uh, so for that kind of stuff, in terms of like actually listing them somewhere, I don't think that that was ever part of the application process, but, uh, but definitely get involved with as many things as you can. Okay, and I guess we're reaching the end of our uh, live Q&A. So I wanted to thank you, Kelsey and Rachel, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the call and answer questions for pre-PAs. -pre -pre um, I know this will be a tremendous source, uh, resource for students moving forward. Did you have any parting words or words of encouragement for people that are thinking about applying to Manitoba's PA program or are currently in the process of applying? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say above all else, good luck with your application process and, you know, just be aware that everybody in your position is nervous. You're not the only one that's nervous. I know that it feels so intimidating. Um, and really throughout the application process, for those of you that have interviews coming up, uh, be yourself, answer the questions honestly, make sure who you are really shines through because anybody can give a rehearsed answer and they really want people that, um, you know, they want to know who you are. Of course, and Rachel. Yeah, I would second what Kelsey said. I would also um, really stress don't, if you're in the middle of applying or have an interview coming up, don't uh, compare yourself to others. Focus on yourself, focus on being the best applicant that you can be. Um, they want to know who you are and to see you. So, so really make that shine through. Um, and also don't hesitate to reach out um, and ask for help, ask for advice. Um, my PA page, I know Anne had mentioned it earlier um, on Instagram, I'm always open to connect. So please don't hesitate to ask questions. Okay, so thank you everyone for coming and hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.